Hi, I'm an Autophones listening room in Denmark and I'm going to show you how to set up one of our exclusive series cartridges in this video. We're going to set it up on this turntable. It's an Tecdas turntable and we have an SME5 tone arm fitted. SME5 tone arm is one of my favorite tone arms, been for many years, so therefore we also have one on this turntable here. Um, the cartridge I'm going to set up is in fact one of the first cartridges of a new exclusive Siri cartridge on the market. It's called the MC Verismo. It is um, related to the other cartridges in our exclusive series. It's related to the Winfeld TI. It's also related to the MCA95, which we don't have in the exclusive series anymore. But if you look at the design, it's pretty obvious that uh, there's something from the MCA95 in this. It's also related to the MC Century and definitely also to the MC Anodyne. And so uh, this fits perfectly into our exclusive series. It is titanium, SLM made titanium and as usual with built-in damping as we have in all our exclusive series. The stylus we are using is the Replicant 100. We use this in all of our exclusive series and the cantilever is a diamond cantilever. The same thing as was in the MC Century but also the same thing of course that is in the MC and the Diamond. In the MC Winfeld TI there's a boron cantilever. So we have something from both of them in this one and very important also is that the rubber suspensions in this one, of course we have a wide range damping system, the rubber suspension in this one uh, is made out of a new compound, a newly developed compound. So um, and the performance of those sub suspensions are very nice. This I'm not going to set up on the SME 5 tone arm. I'm going to take care because stylus guard not on. And uh, so I must be careful not to destroy the cantilever, which is of course the very delicate part. I normally would put on the head shell wires first. Put them onto those four gold plated terminal pins because when I put them on while I have the cartridge in my hand I have really fully control of what I'm doing and I'm not stressing the tone arm or the bearings in the tone arm in any way. So I'll keep this very firmly in my hand and I'll use a pair of tweezers a big pair of tweezers. Of course, you could need, use something like this as well, uh, but I prefer to use a pair of tweezers. So I'll take them one by one and put on. Of course, they are color coded, and so it's pretty easy to see where they go. And I put the white and, and the blue, and then I'll put on the red one like that, and then the green one. And they are fitting pretty nicely, so it's really it's safe to have the cartridge hanging like this now. So now I don't have to worry if I would drop it or whatever. I basically dropped it now, but it's safe to have it like that. Now I have the two screws in my tone arm, which goes into those, these two threaded holes, as always. And also please notice that we have these three points or three small areas which are the areas that is going to be in contact with the underside of the head shell. This is also like we have in all our exclusive series cartridges and in our cadenza series and quintet series because three points can always be in nice contact to a surface, the bottom surface of the head shell. So I'll now try to mount this. So I'm going to find the first threaded hole down there somewhere, it, it's there. So I'm just put in the screw slightly, 
not tight anyway. And then the other one I'll find as well, like this, pretty easy. Then a little bit more and a little bit more. I'm not tightening one of them a lot at the, at, the, at one time. A little bit there, a little bit there. Then I'll have a look to see if I'm having it really pulled up against the underside of the head shell uh, evenly. So I can now tighten this a little bit more, this one a little bit more. I can have a look and what I'm looking for is if these three legs, the one in the front and the two in the rear, are in contact, all of them. And it looks like they are in contact. So I can now tighten. And remember, tighten here means not really tighten with a lot of force. Slightly tighten because we're having to deal with small, delicate things. But now it is mounted in the tone arm. Next thing we need to do now is to set the vertical tracking force. Uh, this cartridge has been designed for a tracking force of 2.6 grams. So this is what we're going to set it for. But of course there will be a range where you can use it. And we have a range between 2.5 and 2.7 grams. To set that, I will start out to balance the tone arm to find out where I have zero tracking force. So I now put the tone arm in here and uh, you see it's sort of pointing upwards. So definitely I have too much weight at the back end. The counterweight is too far back. So I will turn this a little bit to get forward. Well, still. Okay, now it's down on the platter. So that was a little bit too much. I lift it again and turn one more time. Still on the platter. One more time. And well, it is floating. So this is zero gram tracking force. I'll take it back into rest position, secure the counterweight. And then at the side, you have a dial to set the tracking force that is adjusting the spring loaded tracking force inside the tone arm. And I will turn that up to 2.6 grams, which should be about here. So 2.6 grams. I want to make sure that I have 2.6 grams. For that purpose, I'm going to use this digital scale uh, from Autophone DS3. I'll put it on the platter, turn it on, and I will then swing the tone arm in, and it says 0, 0.00 now, lower down, and now it says 2.65 or 2.64, slightly too much. So I will just go a little bit down and have a look again. 2.63, 2.63 is perfectly okay. This, if I say I want to have 2.6 grams, anything between 2.55 and 2.65 will be good. This small difference will really not make any difference for the performance at the end. So definitely now we have the tracking force set. The next things we need to look into now is some more geometry. Now we have set one kind of force, vertical force. We'll come back to a different force later, a lateral force, but back to that later. And now we are going to look at the geometry. And we have a geometry in the lateral direction and we have the, the geometry also in the vertical direction. At this point we would normally go for the lateral direction. And this is about to make sure that this tone arm when it's sort of going across the record that the angle between the stylus and the groove is not going to be too much uh, sort of let me just try to show it to you. So these are the grooves and this is the stylus. So we don't want this to go into the groove like this or this. We really would like this to be perpendicular to the groove. And, and that is in fact not possible in more than two spots with a tone arm that is like this, a, a radial tone arm. So the alignment that we are talking about the lateral alignment is about to make sure that you in two points 
66 millimeters and 121 millimeters that you at these two points have perfect alignment and in the other points uh, other parts of the of the records you would have a small error but with the 66 millimeters and 121 millimeters we are then ensuring that this error is spread evenly across the record. Uh, this is what we call the Berwald alignment. You can use different tools for that, protractors for that, but we do not need to do it because we have set up the tone arm with respect to the spindle of the turntable in the correct distance because we know the distance from the pivot of the tone arm and the stylus and we also know the angle of the cartridge with respect to the tone arm. And these uh, three geometry uh, things, two distances and, and one angle, they are determining how this will work. And they have been predetermined by the position of the tone arm. So I don't need to do this kind of lateral alignment right now. That is already fixed. Then we need now to do some vertical alignment. Again, if I take the model of the diamond like this, um, again, Replicant 100, this is the surface that we really want to, to, to focus on because there and there I have the two uh, edges that need to read the information in the groove of the record. And then if we look at this one, we can have it to be wrong if it's wrong like this or this, or it can also be wrong in this or this direction. So I have that way and that way to adjust it. So if I look from the front, if I take this and, and look from the front like this, then this is what we call azimuth. This I have to adjust or check if it's correct. And the other one like this, this is what we will call the vertical tracking angle or if we look especially only on the stylus, the stylus rake angle. I will start out looking at azimuth and the way we do that is very simple. A mirror. So I will place a mirror on the platter. I will take the tone arm with the stylus and then I will lower it down. Then I need now to look from the front to see if the sort of the, the, the if the stylus and the mirror image that I can see in the mirror if these if these two images are aligned then I have correct azimuth. If they are not aligned if this is like that then the mirror image would be like this. It's very clearly visible. And on the other hand, if it would be like that, it would be over here. So using this mirror and looking for the center line from the actual stylus and the mirror image, if that line is not broken, then you have the correct azimuth. So, and you can do that by, that by eye, really by looking like this. Um, you might have to look a few times. You can also use a small uh, spotlight to make sure that you are seeing what you want to see. But this looks really nice. If it's not correct, if it's really tilted to one side or the other side, you would need to adjust the mounting of the cartridge. Um, and for some tone arms, there is some azimuth adjustment where you can release a screw and twist it. You cannot do this on uh, this SME 5 tone arm. So here, you would need to put small uh, spacer between the lower side of the tone arm or the head shell and the upper side of the cartridge just to, to twist it a little bit. Very small uh, spacers you could put in between. Hopefully you do not need that. I don't need it here. But Asimov, please have a look and see how it behaves. So I'll put the mirror away. So that was from looking from the front. Now I need to look from the side. We have already had a look at this model. Um, I have this model as well, where it's not only the stylus, 
but we have the cantilever as well. The dimension or the relative dimension between the stylus and the cantilever in this model, those dimensions is, is, uh, are correct. Um, and if I put this one into the groove like this, then we are going to look at the angle between record surface and cantilever, but we're also going to look at the angle between the record surface and this surface where you have the contact areas out here. So it's the sort of the, the angle between the record surface and the line contact areas uh, that is going to be important. Uh, nominal for this one is that we want to have uh, 23 degrees here because that would give us 90 degrees here. In a moment I will tell you that this is really not the numbers I will go for, but let's just have those in mind right now, 23 degrees and 90 degrees. Mm. This is a big model. In real life it is really small. So how do you really see if that angle is correct? And for that we will need some tool, a tool to magnify what is going on. And that tool is um, a digital microscope over here. Small digital microscope. Um, there are many of them in the market at very reasonable prices. This one has, the one I use, uh, has a magnification between 150 times and 200 times. It's mounted on sort of a universal stand um, to make it easy to adjust. It's coupled by USB to a laptop. Um, and then we need something to put the stylus down on, on the platter. I'm of course not putting it down directly on the platter. Uh, I have this special made record, worn out uh, test record. Uh, so I made a cut in that, cut with a straight line because if I put this on to the platter, then this straight line is really easy to, as, uh, to use as a reference point in the picture I'm going to take with my digital microscope. So I'll just put this one on here, like this. And, well, I'll turn on the suction. Uh, there's a suction in this Tectus turntable. I will get this one in, like this. I will get this one closer, but let me see where am I? I, I know sort of approximately where I need to be. So it will take just a second to get there. That's about here. Uh, but definitely even if I now turn on the digital microscope, one second, like this, you see the light comes on then um, there's not enough light to get a really good picture. I, I need some more light. So I'll put one more light up. I have one down here. I'll get that one up. It can be all kinds of lights. It's, it's just a question about adding something here. Let me turn it on. Ah, so this makes a difference now. Now we can see what's going on. Um, and I need something like this, it could also be a piece of paper or whatever, to sort of give a reflection of the light. So this is the setup. Digital microscope on some universal stand, some extra light, record that you cut and then something to give a reflection. Then you are ready to go. Um, I want to lower this one down at the very edge of the, of the record, this cut that I made. And this looks pretty good. I already now have a picture. It's a little bit out of focus. I will now try to get a little bit more in focus and to see where we are. Let me see. So, well, this is, in fact, Pretty nice picture. So now I have a nice picture over here. 
I can see the cantilever, I can see the stylus. And it looks okay with respect to the angles. Of course, I cannot measure it just by looking, but it looks okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to take a picture. This digital software that uh, the software that comes together with the digital microscope, you can then take a picture. And in some of this kind of software, you can also make measurements of the picture you have taken. Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, I will take the picture out of the software and then load it into a sort of a different software, a CAD program, and then I will make the al analysis in there. You could print out the picture and then make some measurements with some tools on your table or whatever. Somehow we need to make a measurement of these angles. I made those measurements and uh, beforehand, because I can do that, and I have it over here now. And my stylus rake angle reads 92.5 degrees. And I'm really happy about 92.5 degrees. I'll just lift up the cartridge. 92.5 degrees, well, that is not the 90 as I talked about, but I was also telling you that it's definitely not going to be 90 because when the record uh, is cut, it's not cut with this angle at 90 degrees. It's cut at a slightly higher angle. So uh, what we are aiming at is slightly higher. So this 92.5 between the record surface and the line contact areas means that this one is also bigger than 23. This is now 25.5. Anything for a cartridge like this with the Replicant 100, where you have a stylus rake angle between something like 91, 93, even maybe 90.5 and 93.5 will give you a nice sound. It, I would rather be around 92, but this is also a matter of taste. The, the, the sound is changing slightly if you go from a lower angle to a higher angle. So uh, you will normally get a little bit more details out or you would you think you get a little bit more details out with a higher angle, uh, but you could try with different angles. But this, for me, this looks nice. I know that this is giving me the sound that I want to. But what if it's really off? What if it's whatever below 90 or 96 or whatever? Th then we need to make some adjustments because we want to be around these whatever 91 to 93 degrees, especially when we are dealing with a diamond where you have this line contact to the records. Then it's very important to, to have this correctly. So what could you do? There are different options. I'll move this a little bit away. Uh, one of the options is to put again some uh, spacers in between the lower side of the head shell and the top side of the cartridge. So if you want to twist it in one direction or tilt it in one direction, if you want to get the front part down, you could put something on uh, between the, 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 the front leg and the head shell. If you want to go in the other direction, you could put uh, some kind of spacer in between the two rear legs. That is uh, very efficient, so you really don't need a lot, 0.1 millimeter or something like that. You could also raise or lower the tone arm, but for a tone arm like this, effective length about um, 230 millimeters, it will take you a difference of four millimeters in tone arm height to give you around one degree stylus rake angle uh, difference. So. If you have really, a, you need to, to change it three degrees, you need 12 millimeters difference here. So for me, it's, it's more efficient to keep the tone arm in this sort of parallel position to the record surface and then put in the spacers between the cartridge and the uh, bottom side of the head shell. But anyhow, it can be done and please look into doing it because it's, it's, uh, it's important to have this angle correct. It's, uh, it's, it's maybe not the most important thing for this uh, cartridge, but it's really, really important when we have line contact. And this goes for basically all of the sets up we've been doing. 
So, now we have done with this vertical alignment of the cartridge, or more specifically, or the stylus which we had focus on. And, and please still remember, I'll move this away while I'm talking. It's, uh, please remember that this, this kind of alignment is very important to do. Please, please take the time that you need to do it, do it very carefully and, and make sure that everything is okay. It will make a big, big difference for the sound experience that you're going to have. It's, um, it's important. Take your time, do it, enjoy doing it, and, well, you will enjoy listening to music afterwards. Okay, I got the stuff off now. Now, we need one more thing. And this thing that we are going to talk about now, or look into now, is again something to do with forces. Um, we had the vertical tracking force, now we have something with lateral forces, and this is the anti-skating. When this cartridge is going to go across the record with the, of course, stylus in the groove, there will be some friction. There will be some friction on the stylus, and that friction will have a component that is pointing towards the center of the record. So this would be dragged towards the center of the record, meaning that the inner side of the groove will have more pressure. Inner side of the groove is left channel. Um, I don't want that. I, I would really want to have the stylus to have equal pressure on the outside and inside wall. So I, I need to have a force counteracting the skating force, and that is the anti-skating force. Anti-skating is done on the tone arm and is included as a part of almost every tone arm. There's a knob down here saying anti-skating, and I could turn that, and you would normally go for a value at the same value that you have the vertical tracking force, and that was set to 2.6 grams. So what you would do is to go down here, and then you would turn that up to 2.6 or whatever, like this, and then you will start to figure out if this is okay. But this is not sort of predetermined that you need to go for 2.6. This is a good starting point. It could be 2.5, it could be 2.8. That would give you the really the best performance of this setup. And for this purpose, to determine what value we have to use, we will go for a test record. So of course, an autophone test record. Um, if you look at different tracks on this record, we have the tracking ability tracks down here. 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, and 100 microns at 315 hertz. So those I'm going to use. And um, what I'm going to, I'm going to listen to this. Well, I'm going to listen to right hand channel and left hand channel compared to each other. And I'm, I want those two channels to perform equally. And when I say equally, that I want these two channels to have sort of the same amount of distortion. Now I put the record on, suction, start. Now it's spinning. Of course, I'll clean it. Always clean your records before you're playing them, also test records. Mm, yeah, and stylus, of course, clean that. I don't do it. I just took a nice picture of it. It's very clean. So now I'm going to put down 50, 60, 70, and, and then uh, we're going to listen and compare the two channels. I set the anti-skating now at 2.6, which is the value that you would really want to have because I don't really want to have the starting value. This is the same as the tracking force. And then I'll skip 50 microns. I'll go to the 60 microns. And what I'll do now is I'll listen to the two channels if they are equally well reproduced. So where are we? This is where we have 60 microns. I'll cue down. So, yeah. Now we have 60 microns. Both channels are clean, no distortion. Okay. We go to next value, which is then 70. I'll cue. 
okay, 70. And now if we compare left, clean, right, slightly distorted, okay. This means that we don't have this totally close contact between the stylus and the right hand of the right side of the groove. So we do not have enough force towards the outside. So I will erase the anti-skating a little bit like this. And then we will try to play this 70 micron track one more time. Again, left, still clean, and also now, right, clean. So, that's good. So, this small race of anti-skating means that I'm now having nice contact to the outer groove side, right hand. I now need to go to 80, which is about there. So, cueing. Left, clean, right, well, a bit of distortion. Same thing as we had with 70. Okay, I will give it even more anti-skating and we'll see what happens now. So I'll go back, finding 80 microns, which is there. Now, well, left clean and right hand channel also clean. So again, this extra anti-skating again pulled the cartridge or the stylus more towards the outside groove, right hand side, so that we have equal forces on the two sides. So same kind of distortion, which means no distortion in the two channels. I don't need to go to 90 microns because I know that 90 microns is definitely the limit where we can have tracking uh, from this cartridge. So I'll skip the 90 and say that, okay, we have nice tracking at 80. We have adjusted anti-skating by using this test record. So now we are in fact through all those adjustments. So let me just quickly recap. I'll just stop this one. We have, of course, mounted the cartridge. And then we have adjusted some forces and we have adjusted some geometry. First, we have adjusted the vertical tracking force. Then we looked into the lateral geometry. That was done beforehand because we had the mounting of the tone arm in the correct position. Next thing was the vertical geometry where we looked into both SMF and stylus rake angle, vertical tracking angle. That is also done. And at the very end, we looked into the lateral forces, anti-skating was adjusted using test records. So we have been through all this setup and we are pretty happy about how it turned out. So this cartridge seems to be ready to play some music. And please remember, if you want to enjoy listening to music with this kind of cartridge, uh, where you have a demanding setup, mainly due to this kind of stylus, Use the time needed to go through all these steps. Enjoy setting up, it's, it's, it's quite fun. And then you will also know that at the very end, you will enjoy listening to music. The experience of the music coming out will be so much better if you have the correct setup. I, I really hope that this has helped you, uh, the setup, so you can get inspired and maybe do the same thing or get in, just get inspired and do something similar. But anyhow, this cartridge, this MC Verismo will now be ready to play some amazing music. So really thank you for listening and enjoy music.